Hey everybody, Brooks from Drag Times. Today we're going to go over the V-Box. Uh, this Race Logic performance box, as actually as it's called, and what we use it for. Uh, how to set it up and uh, actually go over some of the testing we've done at the track, comparing the numbers that the V-Box gets along with the actual track numbers to see how close those results are. We use the device in a lot of our testing. It measures 0 to 60, quarter mile, eighth mile, shows the trap speeds for both. Uh, you can set it up for measuring 60 to 130 times. You can set it up for half mile and mile as well. So we're just going to go over some of the settings, how to enable writing to the card, uh, set up a couple of the different speed increments you want to record. And then uh, we got some time slips from the last trip to the track where we ran the V-Box along with, uh, ran at the quarter mile strip at Palm Beach International Raceway. So I'll show you exactly what the V-Box got and what the track got and exactly how close these uh, devices are to actually testing at the real track. While we at Drag Times don't accept VBOX results as in our quarter mile database, uh, just because there's a lot of variables people could do, you can actually run downhill, uh, and there's some other things that you could do to actually affect the times that the box records. Uh, so while I don't use this data on the actual Drag Times website, it's still a great tool to uh, measure your car's performance uh, before you head down to the track so you have, to have an idea of how it's going to perform. First off, um, the device has three suction cups up here and uh, basically you just uh, put this up on your windshield. In most cars that's fine. Uh, some cars have coated windshields where the GPS signal is blocked uh, to the device. If that's the case on the back here there's a uh, spot for uh, external GPS antenna. Uh, so and actually in the, when you run the Tesla uh, that does make a difference and you need an external GPS antenna. So I have one of those here um, this device here, it's uh, $40, and basically I just stuck it to the back of an old GoPro suction cup mount, and I take this, and I run it back to the back windshield, which is not coated, uh, stick that back there for the runs. So if uh, you're using the V-Box and you're getting some weird results, or it says it's having trouble locating the satellites, you pick up one of these external mounts, and then mount it back there, and then plug it into the slot right here, and then you'll be all set there. All right, so here we got the uh, Race Logic Performance box plugged in. Uh, it says low satellites just because uh, we don't have the external antenna hooked up. So, but that's not a big deal uh, to just show you the couple of settings that we set up. So, if you hit the menu button here, you'll see that uh, units. If you go in there, you can set uh, kilometers per hour or miles per hour and so forth. Uh, but more importantly, right here, the write results file. You got to make sure that that has a check check mark next to it. Uh, that means it'll write all the raw data uh, and the uh, metrics down to the SD card that they include there. Um, if you cycle down and farther, you can go to acceleration range. If you press here, you can see we have it set up for 60 to 130. Uh, that's a great test for high-end performance cars to see how they perform uh, from a highway roll. And if you cycle on down a little farther, you can get to the different uh, other tests, distance tests. Uh, and then this one right here, the one-foot rollout. Um, you should have a check mark next to that, so the 0 to 60 times they're reported on the screen here will include the standard one foot rollout. Uh, that's how uh, everyone tests uh, magazines and so forth, so you make sure you're testing against uh, the same kind of standards that everyone else is using as well. Um, when the raw data is viewed, you can actually view the 0 to 60 or 0 to 100 times with and without the one foot rollout, so in the end it really doesn't matter if you have that checked off or not. Um, if you go down a little farther, it's got uh, you can exit there and go to the settings. If uh, you're racing quarter mile or half mile or mile distances, uh, is under the distance tests here. Uh, the V-Box usually comes set up uh, ahead of time with uh, eighth mile, quarter mile, and 60 foot. Uh, but if you go in here, you can just look and verify those. So that's your 60 foot time right there. Um, if you go down here to set range three, you'll see that's the eighth mile. That's good at 660 feet. Uh, number four is at uh, the quarter mile, 1,320 feet, that's good. Um, and then uh, some of the other ones that you might want to set to like half mile or something like that, you can go to uh, set range two, uh, 330 foot, that's another thing they measure at the track, but if you're not interested in that, you could set that to a half mile or a mile, and then when you pass by that point, it will uh, record down the mile an hour you've done. So if you're uh, doing some airstrip events or something like that, half mile, one mile, just make sure you set up those this parameter here. Uh, to the proper number of feet that you're doing. Uh, that way you will know ahead of time uh, exactly what kind of mile an hour you're getting. Um, and then you can also compare that against uh, what they're providing you with the uh, races that day. So now you got your V-Box all set up. You got it set up to write to the card. You got uh, the proper mile an hour and stuff that you want it to record. Uh, so just how accurate is the V-Box when uh, comparing quarter mile times from what it records and uh, what you get at the track. So I got some time slips here from the last time we headed out to the track. Yeah, we were in a Tesla Model S P90D with Ludacris. 
Um, we put up some videos of that car racing, but let's go over the time slips and see how accurate it is. So first run of the night, we have 11.034 at 119.3 miles an hour as per the track. And the V-Box recorded on 11.06, 119.27 miles an hour. So there you go. It, uh, the V-Box is off about three one hundredths from the actual time the track recorded and the mile an hour is within a tenth. So pretty much dead on. Very accurate there. Pretty impressive. Second run of the night, uh, the Tesla ran 11.05, 119.5 miles an hour. And the V-Box recorded 11.07 at 119.41 miles an hour. So again, two one hundredths off of the ET and just about a tenth off on the mile an hour. Another slip we got here is 11.04 at 119.7 miles an hour as per the track. And the V-Box recorded in 11.06 at 119.6 miles an hour. So in this case, the V-Box about, uh, in the ET, about two one hundredths off, so very accurate, and about a tenth off on the mile an hour. Um, that's typically what we see uh, at the track, you know, compared when we uh, run performance tests on, uh, on just the V-Box versus the track. There you go. That's our setup video for the RaceLogic Performance Box, uh, as well as um, accuracy testing to see how this performs uh, within itself and how it compares to the actual times at the track. Uh, we, we think this device is great. We use it for measuring all kinds of performance metrics, additional ones that aren't even available at the track. So we get 0 to 60, 0 to 100, uh, 60 to 130 mile an hour times with rollout, without rollout. Uh, it's just a great tool to have to measure your car before and after performance modifications to compare your car against other cars. Uh, if you don't have a track bot nearby, this is a great device as well. Um, they have two. Uh, there's the Race Logic performance box, the one I have here. There's also a V-Box Sport. Uh, the V-Box Sport connects to your iPhone, uh, works really well as, as well. Uh, I personally like this one with the built-in screen, uh, recording the VSD card. We just pop the card out, put it in our computer, and uh, look at the data. Uh, it comes with software that's kind of complicated to use. Uh, I recommend it uh, you, when, you, when you take the card out, you just put it in your computer. You can go to vboxtools.com and just upload the raw data there. And that website will actually go through the data and display all the performance metri metrics to you uh, in an easy to read format. You don't have to worry about uh, pulling any of the data yourself out of the card. Um, I'll put a link in the description uh, to buy one of these if you're interested. Uh, they start at about $400 for the Sport and $500 for this model. Uh, if you found this video useful, please subscribe and hit the like, below like button below. I really appreciate it. Uh, and that's it. Thanks for watching.